It's a cold, rainy day here in Atlanta, but Justin, Ryan, and I are bringing the heat. It's better than Broadway. Episode 12. Make some noise, everybody. Hooray. Uh... Tonight, uh, tonight we bring you, uh, on episode 12, our very uh, best of 2022. This will be a three-part series as we say goodbye to the year that was in professional wrestling. Uh, tonight, uh, tonight, the chef Justin and I have uh, uh, our first favorite matches from uh, January through April. So, uh, without any further ado, and out gilding the lily, guys, how are we doing today? How, how's how's everybody's weekend? How is uh, how's everybody feeling? Superb. Everybody loves um, like everybody talks about like the rain. I'm like, oh, it's so like we're going. We're like, I actually I actually like the rain. Makes me I like. I, 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 I don't like too. being cold and wet. I don't like being cold and wet. I can be cold. I can be wet. I don't like being cold and wet. But that, maybe that's something from. I don't know, but um, but I, I I enjoy the rain. I am a little bit under the weather though, so I'm trying to struggle through with some coffee. So you guys, please forgive me. Okay, thanks, okay. Buddy. We're happy to have you. <sighs> Chef, how you feeling, buddy? I'm a fan, I'm a fan of the cold. Randy Savage, look, you got going on here with the Dude, pin viper this and the sweater. sweater. You can Ooh, thank Kate, yeah. Randy Savage, right here. I love it. You know, That's I awesome. Do, you know, yeah. I do have to say, I do believe this. Oh. Is. That is right. 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 Fish and sense. It's a cream of the crop fish and sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, anyway, uh, today uh, we are going to bring you three great matches. Uh, our first match is going to be from Chef Ryan, and that is going to be Will Ospreay and Orange Cassidy from Forbidden Door. Uh, Dude, Justin- this match, I mean, this match hit me on all the cylinders, rang all my bells, um, all the bells. You and my bells. it was like choreographed acrobatic excellence. It was like Cirque de Soleil of wrestling. Wait, but, choreographed? Are you telling me that wrestling's predetermined? Uh, I am saying that they figured out what they wanted to do and they executed it perfectly. Also, um, today, also today, before we get going, also today, uh, Justin is going to bring us the CM Punk MJF dog collar match from AEW Revolution back in March. And I am going to bring you my banger of the year, which was uh, FTR and the Briscoes for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship from Supercard of Honor in April 1st of 2022. So uh, we got a really, really fun show for you guys tonight. Really hope you enjoy our best of. Chef, the floor is yours. Tell us all about Will Ospreay and Orange Cassidy from Forbidden Door. Dude, well, okay. Maybe they're not predetermined. Maybe either the the choreography was more like improv but what those two guys did in the ring for a good what 20 minutes was just like it, i mean it, it was Cirque du Soleil in the ring of the acrobatics the timing the moves what was cool was it showed a i didn't know who who will osprey was before that match but b it's like oh shit this guy's coming out looking like genghis kong <laughs> and then like whipping some ass and one of the, my favorites, Orange Cassidy, in, in the way. But also, it's like, it proved that there's so much more to Orange Cassidy if you give it to him. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's what, you know, he will meet your mark. But, you know, when you have a bunch of bigger wrestlers, you know, like you have a Brian Cage or, you know, a, you know, a Pack or, you know, the, the House of Black, those guys are bulkier wrestlers, less acrobatic. I mean, Pack is incredibly acrobatic. I take that back. Yeah, let's be honest. But, like Pac's like five eight. He's like oh a my. he's like he's like an Irish midget. He's just like a built <laughs> like a fire hydrant. But uh, yeah, I mean, the more you give OC, the more you're gonna get. And the fact that like you know, like barely half the match, like he was doing it with his hands in his pockets, um, and then like just moves I have never seen. This you know, uh, Osprey with a spinning backbreaker, you know, and uh, OC with the 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 off the top spinning DDT. And then, you know, uh, Osprey almost had him in the power bomb, and literally OC turned it into a destroyer, or I think it would look like a destroyer pin. Um, and it was a bit, it was twisted. Anyways, it was beautiful. Um, and then, you know, I would like to see a match with, <coughs> I, I'm calling it, I would like to see a triple threat or maybe a fatal four way with OC, Matt Seidel, and the Bucks. Good lord, what a match. That would be crazy. Or OC, Osprey, and the Bucks. 
Yeah, Orange Cassidy is really, really – I don't even want to say he's underrated because he's he's definitely over. Everybody loves him. But I just think he's underrated from a wrestling standpoint. And they talk, They even talk about it, um, you know, in the commentary that, you know, they, they give him, you know, some praise. But, like, he just – because he has such this, like, unique and never see – I mean, let's be – like, you can't – you can't dispute that his gimmick is probably the most unique gimmick mm-hmm. we've ever seen. I don't, I can't think of a more unique gimmick that shouldn't work. Like it really should not work. I but, can think of one. Uh, wait, <laughs> yeah, but let's, but, but it, it matches his in ring style. You, you know what I mean? Like uh, Dan Housen's a great gimmick, but I'm saying like his in ring style matches his outside gimmick. And I just think he does it better than anybody else. And that's to me, like, that's why I like it, you know, because I, you watch wrestling back in the days and it was like, it's like, you know, you got Hacksaw Jim Duggan with the two by four, you got Jake, the snake Roberts, you got, you know, Legion of doom. You have this hodgepodge of, you got doink the clown. You got this hodgepodge of all these ridiculous, like things that all come together because they're trying to win this one prize. And, and his gimmick of not caring is just, you know, it lends itself very well to like this kind of humor piece. But then when you put him in a match and you ask him to go, he reminds us, like, holy shit. Can he like, go? He can go. And not only can he go, he somehow manages to make his crazy high-flying effort look effortless, which to me just is, is great. And then Osprey, like, you don't even really have to say anything about him. I mean, he's um, he's probably the best well-rounded wrestler that's still out there. I mean, he's, you know, Kenny Omega, while I love him, I mean, he's, he's one of the, the greatest of all time. I think Osprey can go far harder than Kenny can. I like to see Osprey go. That'd be fun. They will. You probably you will next. Um, you will if you come back, you're going to see it for January Bidendor. fourth at Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. Oh right, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's going to be a great be match. I personally, I'd like to see Will Osprey go over in that match because I feel like it's his time. You know, Kenny Omega has been injured. He he was out most of the year of 2022, which is probably the reason he's not going to be on this best of uh, list because he was just out for so long and. God bless him, the poor guy. But you know, I think I think it is, I think it's Will Ospreay's time. I hope he defeats uh, Kenny at Wrestle Kingdom 17 in January. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, for a guy like Will Ospreay, <laughs> who's a junior heavyweight and went from mm-hmm. junior heavyweight to heavyweight during the pandemic, and he didn't lose any of his move set, he didn't lose any of his ability. In fact, he got better. His power was better. His speed is better. Every the things that you think would happen to somebody would slow down as they gained thirty pounds. He did the exact opposite, and banger after He's banger after banger, though. like the brawling brutes, just banger after banger after banger. And 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 to to compliment him with somebody like Orange Cassidy, it 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 it, it, it definitely for me, and I know for you was was one of the best matches of twenty twenty two. One hundred percent. Um, and yeah, well, I mean, I want more. Give me more. Give me more. Feed me more. Not to channel right back, but you can't, no, listen, listen. You can't say his name. He will. He will come for us for money. I can't say his name. He, uh, he, will, he will want money. That costs money. Don't, don't say the rye word. Right. Costs money. That bald guy with who you know uses his quads to, to talk. <laughs> it's a beefy dude. <laughs> He'd kill all of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So next on the docket. So we've next got, on the docket, we've got the, another uh, guy who won't be named. <laughs> we've got we've got we've got he who must not be named versus uh, the goat of 2022, uh, Mister Mister Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Justin, how do you feel about this? Uh, I see in your I see you got some great notes here for this match, and I, I cannot wait to hear you uh, proselytize about this match. Your well, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something a little bit because uh, I know this is the best match of the year, um, but for me. The match was amazing, so we are going to go over some stuff with the match, but I want to do something a little bit different, and I want to talk about the build to the match because that is the reason why I picked mm-hmm. this match. I, I can't think, and I was going back when we are going through this, and I was really hoping that it fell in line because it was the first thing that came to my mind um, for the whole year, not just for this little, you know, the, the first slot of the year, is I can't think of a better build for a match, and this might sound like hyperbole, like, but since, like, the rock Austin in was it WrestleMania 17. I can't think of a better match that when you listen to the promo, when you listen, like, you know, if you just YouTube, um, MJF punk dog collar buildup or whatever, like, well, there's, there's so many real 
actual elements to it, you know, of like childhood. There is. And that, and that's what I'm going to get into because like, so that's, that to me is what made this match one of probably one of my top 10 matches of all time. Like if I'm sitting here thinking about it, um, because honestly, what other match can you think of? This match started its build 20 years ago in 2001 when Maxwell Jacob Freeman was on the Rosie O'Donnell show saying, singing, you are my sunshine. That's how That's... long this match has been built up. He had that attitude as a little, however old he was, like five or six or something like that. Yeah. Sitting on there, she, she goes, when you made that video, did you really think that you're going to be on here and you're going to get famous? He went, yeah. Nice. And then she yeah. asked him, what okay. else are you going to do? And he said, I'm going to become a professional, a professional wrestler. That was 20 years ago. He said that on live television. And it all built up Maybe. because, I mean, honestly, like – That's a Babe Ruth moment, dude. Yeah. I, it really is. I mean, and so on the shot. reason why I loved it is that when you when you cut to the build of this promo, one of the first things when you start talking about it, because they go very much so into MJF and Punk and how he's always this, Punk talks about how when he was on the Rosie O'Donnell show, MJF meaning, that Punk was selling out Madison Square Garden. And he uses that in the promos. And if you go through some of these promos and you're talking about, oh, I made some notes here. I want to just go through them. Um, so, like, Max had posters of Punk on his wall. They reference that all the time. I mean, even if you go through, I and mean, anybody that followed Punk, I didn't follow him, but I, I was aware of this because it was his big shtick. He goes, my name is CM Punk. I'm a straight edge. That means that I'm free of alcohol. I'm free of drugs. And that means that I'm better than you. Mm. I mean, Maxwell's... I am CM Punk, and that means that I'm better than you. Maxwell literally took CM Punk's tagline and tagged on, and you know it. And that's it. I mean, this match, ever since the inception of Maxwell Jacobs' career, this match has been a build just for him stealing that tagline from Punk. And they didn't go too much into that. You know, they alluded to it because, you know, at, at the end of the day, everything is, is you know, copyright infringement or whatever, right? Like, it's all plagiarism. But um, I just thought that was, that was really cool. I love that, you know, Punk had to go through the entire roster of MJF's Goonies, you know, like Sean Spears and Wardlow. Yeah. And then, you know, it was the same thing, like the Trials of Jericho, right? Like, he had to go through all that. That's classic, classic to get to the to the main boss. Um, that promo at the beach that. brawl. Um, when um, let's see, when he um, um, th this is something when I was doing the research for it that that blew me away. And this is kind of a side note. I'm going to set this aside. So at beach brawl, Maxwell Jacob Freeman did a promo talking about how in Ohio in 2014, MJF or I'm sorry, Punk didn't like the way that things were going and he turned his back on the fans and he said, just wait how long, because you know, you guys can cheer him all he wants to, but I guarantee you he's going to do it again. Maxwell Jacob Freeman's a fucking prophet. <laughs> yeah. He's a prophet. He said this a year before or not, not a year. He said this, you know, mere like I think nine months or something like that before the brawl out, fall out, out, the all out. Right. And then what happens? CM Punk didn't like the way things are going. He talks shit. And the only thing that CM Punk hasn't done yet was he said, then he's going to go on a podcast and whine about it. That's what MJF said, right? Well, Punk hasn't done a podcast yet. He did UFC commentary and made a slight about it. So it's just I, that little tidbit right there. I was, I was like, that's why like, this is, I feel like it's so prophetic and it's so important. And like and going back and doing the research about, you know, going through and remembering all this, I was trying to find the actual full match. And I was having trouble finding it. But um, it makes me want to see. Makes me want to watch it again. It makes me want to come back, like to see CM Punk come back and and MJF fucking beat him to put him over. I mean, this match put MJF more over than he already was to me. Um, but then, but then MJF came back and he beat Punk in Chicago. They well, kept making that was before the dog collar match. Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm building up to the dog collar. No, right my right bad. So, my apologies. So MJF came to and beat CM Punk in Chicago, and he was – and they talked about this all the time because he kept talking about you want to be Piper, you know, you want to be Brett in Canada, you know, you want to be Punk in Chicago. And he keeps talking about you're never going to be these things. And he's like, well, I know I'm damn well better than Punk in Chicago because I beat your ass. Like there's just so many things that, that were so weaved into the story over the cost. You know, the tag match between – 
FTR and 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 then when CM Punk came back and he got you know um, John Moxley the pop for that match when John Moxley came out that felt like Hulk Hogan coming in for Macho Man Randy Savage to do a tag team or something like that mm-hmm. back in the eighties that's how big that felt they're like who this is FTR and they they FTR was being pushed so hard at that time I mean they, they've always had a good push even though they're not. You know, they've always been touted as one of the greatest in the world. They really built these guys up to be the greatest tag team in the world. And and they're like, how the hell is Punk going to beat the greatest tag team in the world? And he gets John freaking Moxley to come in. That pop alone was crazy. And then the, uh, uh, the announcement of the dog collar match itself, when he came in through there, that when, when Punk was sitting there in the middle of the ring, in the pipe bomb, you know, posture, pipe bomb posture, that's going to be, I'm going to coin that word you know, seated Indian style. He goes over all these different things. He talks about how, you know, he shows him the picture of how MJF was, was literally trying to come see him and paying money to get a picture of him. And he has that picture and he pulls it out in this little box. And he goes to you, that was the greatest day of your life. To me, it was just Friday. You can't be more dismissive it's like the whole like like oh, never meet your heroes oh, thing, yeah. and then he says, you know, come sun or you know, come come uh, revolution. It's going to be the worst day of your life. To me, it's just going to be Sunday. There are so many promos that like I, we could I could spend an entire podcast just talking about the promos coming back up to here. But then when you finally get to the match, the last thing before the actual match starts that just was that nail in the coffin for me to make it something special was anybody that did follow um, ring of honor or, I mean, Rob, I know you popped like hell when you saw this, but when, when punk came out and it was freaking AFI, Miseria Kanta or what, K- Kantare or whatever Miseria it is. How you pronounce it. Yeah. His original ring of honor entrance that do, 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 do. It sounds like Terminator. At first I was like, Term- is that Kenny Omega? What are we talking about? Like, what's going on? Goosebumps, and then, right? yeah. But when I finally realized and recognized what it was, I was like, wow, this is special. Um, and, and going into the match again, it was a classic match. They used and pulled a lot of stuff from, from Brett and Piper throughout the matches and just sprinkled it in there as an homage, which, you know, punk loves to do. And I know we talk shit about him at the end of the day. He is a, he's a historian of, of, and he loves the, he loves the wrestling. Um, he loves the wrestling that punk, you know, and, um, and, you know, Max was playing the classic heel the whole time. Throughout the match, there were several spots where Max was trying to get away, and he's using the um, and he's using the chain to get him back. There's a particular spot where um, they had taken the chain through the ropes, and and Punk used it as a pulley system to nice. sling MJF into the turnbuckle. There's another time when MJF was going to come off the top rope, and all and 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 almost lifeless Punk is sitting down there and yanks the chain and just drops him down. Another spot where you know where MJF is is being choked and hung from his own chain, you know, basically his own doing, right? Of mm-hmm. taking this match and you know just bring him out there. There's so many little poetic things. It was a bloodbath. The whole thing was just a bloodbath. Most of it was punks, and he was bleeding like freaking Dustin in the Cody Dustin match from you know 2020 or whenever or 19 or whatever he was, that was. He was bleeding like a primary. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's that's, that's the, when I saw that I was like, he looks like fucking Dustin Rhodes and you know Cody versus Dustin from, you know that that's the first thing that came to my mind. But then Wardlow comes out and you think he's going to give the dynamite diamond ring like he always does. He's always you know bailing him out, and all of a sudden he can't find it like the best man at fucking wedding, <laughs> right? And he's like, oh oh, I I don't know where it's at. Sorry, he walks out and you're like, oh, so maybe maybe this is going to be here, and you know they go through another couple spots and then. Finally, Wardlow comes back out, and unbeknownst to MJF, he's found the ring. He lays it in the ring. Punk takes it and pulls him up, kind of almost thinking, like, I right, trying to be that good guy. He's like, I don't know if I want to do this. You know, he's, he's conflicted. And just as one last act of defiance, MJF on his knees, bloody, finished, spits in Punk's eye. And, and when he grabs him by the damn dog collar, and just rails back and pulls him into as he hits it. To me, I don't. I can't even think of a movie that has a better ending like that. That sounds. That feels like a, a like a Spielberg ending. Just the, the way it was acted. I mean, it, it live in front of you know twenty thousand people. It was just. I mean, it gave the whole match gave me goosebumps. Um, but yeah, so that's 
that's that's it. That's why I want to talk about more about the promos as opposed to the match yeah. itself. But you know, well, the it, match, it's all like obviously, ground leading into it that makes the match that much better. It has. If if you get a chance, if you haven't seen it, I beg you guys to watch the lead up. There's plenty of videos online. I'm sure they probably have ten minute ones. They probably have hour long ones of all the promos that you can go find, and then watch that match and tell me if it doesn't make you feel something. Because if it doesn't, you're not human. And that's why we love pro wrestling because you know. It, for a great match to be great, you have to be invested. You have to be built up. The 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 action, the the, the passion, the movements, everything has to be right and crisp. And and the things that that MJF and CM Punk have done that have been parallels uh, with with you know CM Punk back in in, in uh, Ring of Honor when he was leaving, he would say you know the the, the devil you know the, the greatest trick was the devil is showing that he doesn't exist. And then MJF comes in and does the same thing with the devil. You know, and, and, and the um, yeah, I love the Street Fighter line. You know, he said, you know, taking that picture of me is the best day of your life. To me, it was a Friday. And then JF rolls back in and says, you know, that promo was your greatest work to me. You know, it was nothing. And I'll see you. I'll show you on Saturday. So, I mean, like, there's so many good parallels between the characters that they portray. I mean, obviously, CM Punk and, and Maxwell Friedman, you know, Max Friedman and Phil Brooks are, 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 are two men. That, that, that run into each other through this industry. And, and it's a beautiful thing to see that these guys wanted to work with each other so goddamn badly. Obviously, MJF probably wanted a little more than Punk did because it was a childhood thing for him and it wasn't yeah. old for him. But I, I really I really do love the fact that this was one of the finest rivalries of the last 20 months. I think it was one of the finest rivalries of the last 20 years. Yeah, and it's a shame that we yeah, didn't I'm, get the culmination of that with um, MJF beating Punk for the title. But, you know, that's yeah. just, it's just something. You hell know, in a cell. Can't have it all. We had a hell it, in you can't, but hey, you know what? Some, you never say never in professional wrestling. Non-wrestling. If you learned it. That's right. Well, uh, since uh, we, we've got those two, um, there's two Rob, things. Rob, you are up, my friend. There, 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 there are two things that I really love about American professional wrestling. Uh, one of those things is tag team wrestling. I'm a huge fan of tag team wrestling, always have been. Um, the other thing is we have a chat message, by the way. Do um, you guys want to check that while I start? Oh, we have a fan? Gilden the Lily? I don't know. It said a well, chat message. I, I just got to pop up. Oh, no. No? Okay. No, we, we still have zero fans. Oh, it's no fans. No, no, no one's no. talking to us. So anyway, uh, I love professional wrestling, and, and I absolutely love Ring of Honor. And uh, I, I've, I've been doing things with Ring of Honor for uh, quite a while. Um, Gary Jister and Carrie Silken kind of brought me in to do some stuff, to, to do some volunteer work, and then it just kind of led to better things for me. Um, and I really miss being able to go to Ring of Honor shows and put the ring together and ring the bell and grab the belts and collect streamers and just, you know, do whatever those guys need. You know, I remember getting Jay Briscoe a pack of gum one time because he wanted a pack of gum. And now anytime I go to a show, I always throw him a pack of gum. It's just a joke. But, does he remember uh, Does he remember that? Oh, yeah. Does he, like, acknowledge him? Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Nice. So, anyway, um, my match of the year is uh, FTR and the Briscoes for the ROH Tag Team Championships back from Supercard of Honor on April 1st. Uh, this is a really important uh, uh, moment in pro wrestling history for me because um, – well, let me well, let me stop you right there before you do anything because I, I, I you've got a lot your 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 notes are copious as Taz would say, but I think it's important to uh, note that um this match did anybody watch the the match the other night? I missed it because it, you you may be redoing this match for the next one. No, no, this they had the the rematch last night. Oh no, I missed it. So, anyways, I just go go ahead. I don't, you you may be saying that. Wait until part three of our best of 2022. Mm. Just going to lay that out there. So anyway, um, Alex Podgorski of TJ, uh, TJRWrestling.com, he said something that I thought was brilliant. Uh, he said, hidden somewhere deep in the shadow of WrestleMania 38 is a genuine match of the year contender. This match was a genuine dream match with years in the making. It was something the modern wrestling landscape needed badly, a throwback to a better time. And who's a better throwback? than FTR. My God. Oh my gosh. Top, I mean, top guys. I mean, whenever you watch wrestling, these guys, when they were in WWE as the revival, it was no no flips, only fists. They never did anything off the top ropes. They just kept you in the ring. A lot of catches, catch can, a lot of brawling. 
it was great. And it was weird because, you know, Final Battle 2021, that was the last ROH show in the Carrie Silken Sinclair era. And, you know, there was a lot of unanswered questions like what was going to happen with the future direction of ROH. The Briscoes won the tag belts for the 12th time on Final Battle 21 against the Kingdom, Matt Taven, and um, uh, help me out, guys. Um, Matt Taven and Matt Bennett. And uh, Mike Bennett, Mike Bennett. And uh, after the match, the Briscoe said, we don't know what's going to happen next, but, you know, anybody wants some, come get a piece. Lights go out, FTR's out. They start brawling. They start beating the hell out of each other. And then there was nothing for months because ROH was on hiatus and we really didn't know what was going to happen. And then March 2nd, Justin does the best impression uh, on Dynamite. Tony Khan starts the show and tells everybody he bought Ring of Honor, and the whole place went freaking crazy. I have a big announcement to make. It's going to be Ring of Honor. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, the redo of Ring of Honor was going to be April 1st, 2022, uh, a month later at a WrestleMania weekend. And Supercar of Honor has always run WrestleMania weekend. And, I mean, the buildup for this match, it was very short because, you know, you had – December of 21, then nothing, then March, then you got to have a match. And, you know, the Briscoes were on AEW TV a whole lot, but you know, you, they gave them what they could. They come out, they get in the ring for the match, the holy shit change. Well, that was during the Pinnacle era. Yeah, that's right. So the match starts, the holy shit chants are running crazy before the bell even rings. And then FTR refuses the handshake, the, the, the code of honor. The crowd's booing. Everything's going crazy. Mark and Cash get the start. Good catch wrestling. Mark's getting the better of Wheeler. And then he tags in Jay. Cash gets away, tags in Dax. And then Dax and Jay just start freaking going crazy. Chop fest, forearm fest, working each other over. Dax gets pissed, throws a chair in the ring. Paul Turner catches the thing and says, no, 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 no. Crowd gets a little short little laugh, you know, because that's Ring of Honor. They have little, little fun moments. Little gimmicks. Yeah, little gimmicks. Jay and Dax beating the hell out of each other. They Everybody gets in the ring. The 12 time champs, the AAA champs are just getting crazy with the brawls. They're just going crazy. It's spot central. Tope con heroes, Tope suicidas. Uh, there was a spot where I think Dax Wheeler does an avalanche, uh, an avalanche suplex to the floor on Mark Briscoe. Ooh. Absolutely Ooh. crazy. Tons of false finishes, great stuff for the fans. Then the crowd, then the crowd does their whole Rocky Four thing, where instead of booing for the heels, FTR, they start cheering FTR. It's like that Rocky Four moment where the Russians start cheering for Rocky because he's taking it. He's just taking it. I can change, and you can change. Then we all just change. I can't take any more. There's three of them. Hit the one in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Hit the one in the middle. (laughs) Just going. Uh, they missed the big rig. The Briscoes hit the big rig. There's two. Jay's bleeding. Dax is bleeding. The whole cr- the crowd's hot as hell. And the then, whole crowd's and bleeding. Then, the crowd's <laughs> bleeding. And then, and, then, and then the Briscoes hit the froggy bow for two. And it's it's they're getting ready to finish this match off. They're going to they're going home and they go for the doomsday device. And somehow uh, somehow Cash uh, knocks uh, Mark off uh, distracts Mark. Uh, Dax gets out of it. They throw Jay out of the ring. They hit the big rig, one, two, three, and FTR are your new Ring of Honor champions. And the great, the great thing was it was like everybody, the, the, it was electric from start to finish. Uh, Kerry Silken, who is the, the CEO and owner of Ring of Honor, he comes in, he raises the hands of FTR. And then the greatest thing happens, FTR gets back in the ring. They lay the belts in front of the Briscoes, and they just bow down to Jay and Mark because – if anybody is Ring of Honor, it's Jay and Mark Briscoe. And these guys have been there since the beginning. They have been bookers. They have been producers. They're 12-time champions. Jay was the two-time uh, Ring of Honor world champion. Mark was the two-time television champion. I mean, these guys live, eat, breathe, and shit Ring of Honor. And I just love those two to death. I love Jay. I love Chicken. They're just good dudes. They just, they're just – I've seen – I've they're said it many times. Nowhere. And they're sweet. I've guys. seen it many. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go um, ahead, I, was saying, I, I was just going to say, I've said it many times in the group. The Briscoes have been my favorite tag team for five years now. They just, they just, I, don't, I mean, I, yeah. I, I love it. I love FTR too. They're probably right back, you know, you know, right behind them. But the Briscoes, ever since I saw them 
when we went to uh what main stage or center stage or whatever it was yeah. at that <clears throat> that Ring of Honor show where it was the Briscoes and I think it was like against AJ Styles and somebody else or something like that. Uh, Rob, I think you were working and a couple of us from the group came to see it. But ever since I saw that and they were up on the scaffolding, like that Jay is like the most believable badass you'll ever see. Like, you know, they need to be on television more. Um, and I, I need to go back and I want to watch last night's match for sure. Yes. So last night's match was a banger. And uh, as a preview, I'm like 90% there that that's going to be my match. We're doing we're doing the the best of like you know first third of the year second third of the year last third of the year so that's right so yeah in our, in our, so in our next episode we're gonna give you guys the best of May through August so that's May June July and August um, there were some great matches uh, going through that um, as a preview I'm gonna give you guys uh, Seth uh, Rollins and Cody Rhodes from Hell in a Cell. Uh, that's gonna be fucker because that was like basically all of ours. We were all gonna pick <laughs> that one. But we, but we, but the good news is it is a, it is a podcast and we do have a conversation, so we will all get to talk about it. I'm sure that'll be a big uh, topic of discussion. Uh, just just the heart that that Cody showed. That, that's that's for next week. Um, how do you guys feel? Uh, how do you guys feel? I, I'm I think uh, all three of our matches were fabulous. I, I can't I can't pick a favorite. Um, I really, I really. I mean, think they're all they're all so different. Like, how could you? So uh, tag team dog collar, just you know, flying monkeys everywhere. Like, who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I, I'd say let's do let's let's pick a favorite at the end. Okay. That was so match of the year. Match okay. of the year. Match of the yeah. year. After I think that's all fair. Nine, after we talk, they're all yeah, nine. Yeah. We'll do a match of the year. Yep. Okay. okay. I, love yep. That. I think that's great. Cool. Um, so we're probably going to call it there, um, yep. cause we're keeping it nice, short and sweet. Um, but yeah, uh, if you like it, tell us, if you don't like it, tell us that too. Um, review yeah. us, send us your feedback, talk about us on Apple, uh, podcasts, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. If you want us to keep doing this, let us know. Let us know. Thank you guys for tuning in. All three of y'all. Yep. Uh, we appreciate you. <laughs> we love you. Justin, Rob, and the chef. Sign All up. right. Until next time, guys. Week, everybody. We're going to drum a lot of here. Happy wrestling, everybody. <laughs>